Hi, my name is Bertrand Dirk, and today we'll be discussing about what vertigo cervical headache is, or often called vestibular migraine. So, have you ever been diagnosed with this condition or may think you do suffer from vestibular migraines or vertigo cervical headache? Well, today we'll be going into greater detail so that you have a clear understanding of what this condition is, as well as understanding the possible causes of why you're having this, as well as the treatment options to help manage, treat, or resolve this condition. So, let's get into it. Now, vertigo cervical headache, also known as vertigo migraine or even vestibular migraine, is a common cause for symptoms such as dizziness, unsteadiness, or vertigo. Now, head pain or migraine symptoms may also be present during the attack, but however, can also be completely absent. So that means you may have something called vestibular migraine, however, you do not have any head pain or migraine pain at all. And you could have all the other symptoms, such as the vestibular symptoms, which we'll go into greater detail. Now, common migraine symptoms, such as the nausea and vomiting, can also occur with this condition. And if pain is, is present, pain can be either unilateral, being one side of the head, or can be bilateral, being both sides and around the whole head as well. Now, sufferers often describe symptoms that are exacerbated by sudden movements of the head. For example, turning the head in a specific direction or even maintaining the head still for a prolonged position. So say for example you may be on the computer, working on the computer for a prolonged time, you may be straight or you may be twisted to one side and that can often exacerbate symptoms. Or you may be in a meeting or in a seminar whereby you're sitting still for a prolonged time and that can also exacerbate a lot of the vertigo or vestibular type symptoms. Now, there are other visual inputs that can aggravate things, such as bright lights or flickering lights. You may be driving and the shadow effect going through the trees can exacerbate your symptoms. Or even um, disturbances such as looking down the aisle of a grocery shopping lane. So you may be going shopping, you may be going down an aisle, and that depth perception can actually trigger um, an attack to come on. So um, there are a lot of things that can actually trigger attacks, but a lot of visual disturbances, looking at things, can actually exacerbate a lot of um, symptoms and attacks. And it is common for symptoms to be worse when there is also some stiffness in and around the neck as well. So let's go over the main symptoms that people with vertigo, cervical migraines have, or vestibular migraine sufferers have as well. Now, vestibular symptoms um, can be classified as three things. The first one can be called vertigo. So what is vertigo? People often misuse the word vertigo and they say that they have vertigo, but they don't. Or don't think they have vertigo, but they do have vertigo. So what is vertigo? Now vertigo is basically the sensation when you feel the environment around you is actually spinning. So you might be completely still, but you're visually looking around the place and the actual room around you is physically spinning round and round. This can also cause involuntary eye movements and can also experience the contraction of the muscles around the eye to contract and move from side to side. So vertigo is an external sensation whereby the environment is spinning around you. Whereas dizziness, dizziness is different to vertigo. And dizziness is described as lightheadedness or heavy-headedness, an unsteady feeling, or fogginess, or wooziness. And it is usually an internal sensation. So remember, dizziness is not the environment spinning around you, but it's the internal wooziness, unsteadiness, or lightheadedness of the head. The third one is imbalance. So vestibular symptoms, vertigo, headache, um, can experience imbalance. And imbalance is where the sensation of feeling unsteady on your feet. So for example, you may be walking 
or you may be sitting, you may be always drifting off to one side, um, and you may have to overcorrect your balance to avoid yourself from swaying from side to side. And the other fourth symptom that you can have is a headache or migraine. Now, pain from a headache or migraine can be felt in the head during an attack. However, it can also be completely absent, whereby you don't have any headache or migraine type pain, but you have all the other vestibular type symptoms. Now, symptoms of migraine such as aura, nausea, and vomiting can also occur. Now, when you do have this condition, remember, it can be called vertigo, cervical headache, or vestibular migraines, it can be very debilitating because not only can you have pain in the head, but you've also got all the vestibular symptoms which can affect you tremendously. Not only can affect you in terms of vestibular symptoms such as vertigo, dizziness and imbalance, but you can have all the other symptoms of a migraine like nausea, vomiting, your thoughts and concentration levels can be dampened. Your cognitive levels are, are, are low. Your memory is very poor as well. Um, not only will you vomit with that as well, but you can become sensitive to the light, sound or smell. You may have difficulty in speaking whereby the words coming out of your mouth is all mixed and jumbled around. You may have pins and needles and numbness in your face, arms and legs as well. And because of this, it can really be debilitating, whereby it can affect all aspects of your life. It can affect your social outings, whereby you don't want to go out anymore, or you don't want to plan to go out because you never know when an attack may come on. And this may also increase your anxiety levels, and then depression levels can become secondary from that as well. But not only that, it can affect your work balance. So you may find that you may take so many sick days to the point where you may have lost your job as a result. It may also affect your family life whereby you're just not yourself anymore. You're constantly dizzy, you have vestibular symptoms, you've got the pain in the head, you may be very moody because of this chronic pain. And at times you may have relationship breakdowns or marital loss as well because of this chronic pain. And unless someone has the same symptoms as you, people may not understand what you're going through. They may just say, well, just take Panadol or Aspirin, that should clear it. But you know that that is just like a lolly to you and it will not make any changes to you. So, let's now talk about the other similarity of symptoms because people can often get misdiagnosed. Um, and there are, very, there are a lot of other diagnoses out there that are similar to vertigo um, headache or vestibular migraines. So there are three most common ones and let's go over into greater details so that you have a clearer understanding whether or not you suffer from any of these other symptoms. The first one being called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV. The third one is labyrinthitis. And the uh, second one is labyrinthitis, and the third one is Meniere's disease. So, let's talk about BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Now, this is a condition where it affects the inner ear, whereby small calcified crystals can actually become dislodged in the canals of the inner ear. And this can actually alter your body's perception of balance and head position, causing vestibular-like symptoms. And this similarity of symptoms to those of vestibular migraines mean that sufferers of vestibular migraines can often be misdiagnosed by health professionals in having BPPV, whereas they actually don't and have vertigo, cervical headache, or they have vestibular migraines. Let's now talk about labyrinthitis. What is labyrinthitis? Now, lab the labyrinth is a structure that is found also in the inner ear, and often considered as the balance center. Now, inflammation to the labyrinth, often from infection, can cause sufferers to experience difficulty with their balance. Most commonly, labyrinthitis is caused by a viral infection, like a cold or a flu, or from herpes, which is another viral group, or chickenpox, shingles, or cold sores. Ear infection can also um, lead to inflammation of the labyrinth. 
And the diagnosis involves tests such as hearing tests, balance tests, head position tests, blood pressure tests, scans or other medical investigations. Now the third one is Meniere's disease. So what is Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease have symptoms like dizziness and vertigo, but also ringing in the ears, hearing loss, and even congestion in the ears can all be caused by Meniere's disease. And this is where there is a buildup of actual fluid in the labyrinth, which is in the inner ear. And this fluid buildup alters the normal signals that this balance center sends to the brain, causing abnormal symptoms. And Meniere's disease typically affects people at the ages of between 40 to 60 years of age. However, it can be experienced across all ages of group. So, hopefully this gives you a bit more information about the different types of symptoms. Um, and now let's go into what the cause of vertigo cervical headache is or what the cause is of vestibular migraines. Now, modern research suggests that the convergence of nerves from the vestibular system into the brainstem located in the upper neck is the root cause of vestibular symptoms. Now, injuries to the neck, like whiplash injuries, or, or from a head injury, or dysfunction in the neck from a poor posture, can actually cause the brainstem to become sensitized. Now, the role of the brainstem is to filter information from the body, including the vestibular symptoms, as it passes into the brain. Now, normally, information from the vestibular symptoms travel to the brainstem through the vestibular cochlear nerve. However, as this information is now reaching a sensitized brainstem, which is an overactive brainstem, what would previously be considered normal information is now detected as a threat. And now this can result in symptoms of vestibular cervical migraines, or vestibular migraines, such as vertigo, dizziness, unsteadiness, and even head pain and migraine. So in summary, if you are suffering from this, then this may be caused because of an issue in the upper three vertebrae of the neck, which has caused the brainstem to become hypersensitive and overactive. And when that is the case, then this can then cause all the vestibular symptoms such as vertigo, dizziness, unsteadiness, and pain into the head as well. So then, if we now know what the cause is, what can we do about it and what are the treatment options? Now, most of our patients have usually tried everything to resolve their vertigo cervical headaches. They have been to balance and dizziness clinics. They've been treated for BPPV, tried medications, or even seen um, specialists and are on heavy doses of medications. Now, this may lead to some short-term relief However, they still do suffer from this in the long term. So what can you do about it and what are the other treatment options available? So my question to you then is, is have you seen a headache clinician to assess the first three vertebrae of the neck? And have you had your brainstem thoroughly assessed to see whether or not it is hypersensitive? Now if you haven't, then I would strongly urge that you seek um, professional advice from a headache clinician to see whether or not your neck and your brainstem is the cause of your vertigo headaches and your vestibular migraines. Now, if it is deemed and proven that your neck and the brainstem is hypersensitive and it is the cause of your vertigo headaches and your vestibular migraines, then that means you should be in good hands because that means treatment can be commenced straight away. And treatment can be quite effective at desensitizing the brainstem, making it back to normal in terms of sensitivity levels. And this can all be done by treating the upper three vertebrae of the neck where the brainstem lies. So, my advice is if you haven't had your neck assessed by a headache clinician, then that is where I will point you next to, to get your neck um, assessed and to get your brainstem assessed as well. So, hopefully with this video you have a clearer understanding of what cervical vertigo headache is or vestibular migraine is. 
and hopefully you understand the cause of it and also the treatment that is available. My name is Bertram Dirk. I hope you found value in this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you.